All right, so, hey Sue, let's get this talk started. So, Apple describes Siri as an easier, faster way to get things done. It's the voice assistant built into every Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and HomePod. Now, Siri hasn't changed too much since its introduction in 2011, with Apple slowly adding features and capabilities, but these slow advancements have meant that other voice assistants such as Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa have long been considered more capable. Now, part of the reason for Siri's slow development is the lack of ability for developers to integrate with it. Now, this is changing, thanks to SiriKit, I mean SiriKit, uh, which was introduced at WWDC in 2016. So, at the time, it offered a fairly limited API, um, but that's changing a little bit this year, and there are a bunch of new features added to Siri this year uh, centered around the idea of shortcuts. So, what's a shortcut? Well, there's many different things that Apple refer to as a shortcut, uh, but this talk will cover uh, suggestions, uh, uh, Siri suggestions, uh, intense extensions, intense UI extensions, shortcuts in Siri, as well as shortcuts the app. So, shortcuts and suggestions. These are for predictable, repetitive tasks that are generally quite quick to complete. They show up in various places around the OS, such as on the lock screen as notifications, or on the Siri and search page of your home screen. If you have an Apple Watch, they'll also show up on the Siri watch face. Now, basic shortcuts essentially just deep link back into your app, while more advanced ones can perform actions in the background. Now, this makes, it makes for an ideal user experience if you don't have to kick the user back to your main iOS app. So take this example of ordering coffee. With just two taps, I can place my morning coffee order. So you'll notice an indication of success is given at the bottom of the shortcut there. We get the little tick, and that lets us know that we ran this shortcut successfully. But how does uh, iOS know when to surface a shortcut? Well, shortcuts are donated to the system uh, when a relevant action is performed. And this can be done in one of two ways. So the first is using the NS User Activity API, which has been around uh, since iOS 8 introduced handoff, and it's mostly been used for handoff-related features until now, uh, and also through intents, which um, are a new property which de uh, describe your app's interaction with SiriKit. So the ideal time to donate a shortcut is when a user performs an action. So in this example, when the Pay Now button is hit, along with uh, ordering coffee, uh, I'm also donating a shortcut for this action. But what if you don't want to donate a shortcut then and there? Perhaps it isn't always relevant that the user is performing an action right here, right now, but you want to show a shortcut in the future, given certain other factors. Well, you can schedule shortcuts, uh, or sort of suggest shortcuts to show based on time of day, a certain situation, or even location. But sometimes the binary tick or cross that we get to indicate whether a, a shortcut ran successfully isn't quite enough to properly convey the information to our users. So in this case, we have a UI extension, a shortcut, an intent UI extension, which allows us to show a view accompanying our shortcuts. So I'll let these two examples play and then talk about them some more. Cool, so the example on the right uh, is perfect use for a UI extension because uh, we're fetching information from our server that we wouldn't otherwise be able to show. In this case, the uh, wait time for the coffee order. And the one on the right is also a good example of a UI extension because instead of performing an action on the user's behalf, we're actually bringing information to them. We're surfacing this information. You'll notice there's no action button below the shortcut, uh, but this shortcut can still be quite useful. So it's worth noting that intense UI extensions are only supported on iOS. You can't actually show the UI part on uh, shortcuts run on watchOS. Um, and it's also important to note that these views cannot receive touch events. So if you tried to interact with any of the examples on this screen, it would kick the user right back to the iOS app. And obviously, that's not an ideal user experience. So there is another way that shortcuts can be surfaced, and that's with voice via Siri. 
So you can add these to Siri uh, by assigning a phrase, either from the uh, shortcuts, like Siri and search page of the settings app, or with a custom uh, INUI add voice shortcuts view controller, which you can present to users from within your application. Now, shortcuts based on this, these new custom intents can't be changed or added once they're added to Siri. Um, so the way that it works is you as the user assign a custom phrase for a given shortcut, and then that phrase remains the same. So in this example, I'm assigning the phrase uh, NRL top four to, see that video play? Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm assigning the phrase NRL top four to a uh, shortcut, and um, if I want to see, and it shows me the top four teams on the NRL ladder. If I want to see the uh, top six teams, I can't suddenly just ask Siri to show me the top six teams. Uh, what I'd actually have to do is either the app would have to donate a separate shortcut, uh, and I would have to add this to Siri with my voice, uh, and then I would have to yeah, assign a phrase to it, and uh, it would be a separate shortcut as far as Siri is concerned. So it does feel like a bit of a limitation for now that Siri can't accept parameters. Uh, but in a way, I think it's by design at least that a bunch of apps aren't adding a whole bunch, of short, uh, whole bunch of phrases to Siri without you knowing what they're adding. So otherwise, if you have five apps that all do similar things, they might be competing for the same phrases and then you don't know what your Siri can do. Uh, so in that way, it is nice to know what your Siri is capable of because everything it can do outside of system features, you've actually added to Siri. Now, what might mean one thing to you mean a different thing to me. So that's why it's nice to sort of know exactly what your Siri is capable of. Uh, an example of this might be when you ask Siri for the football scores, you're probably, you might be talking about this type of football. But when I ask Siri for the football score, I'm definitely talking about this type of football. So yeah, it's nice to know what, what you're going to get from Siri. Um, so one of the biggest advantages to being able to add a shortcut to Siri is the ability to provide voice feedback from the request. So you'll notice that as well as displaying the UI extension here, we're also uh, getting some text back. And if you run this shortcut hands-free, then Siri will read this response out loud, which means shortcuts are great for uh, triggering with your voice as well. So the example on the right removes the UI extension, but you'll notice we still get that same text response. So shortcuts added to Siri on your iPhone can also be run on your Apple Watch or HomePod uh, just without the UI extension. Now, in an example later on, I'll show you how to make a shortcut available to be surfaced on watchOS. Um, yeah. So there's also Shortcuts the app, which is a replacement for the workflow app, which Apple acquired early last year, early in 2017. Uh, and these, uh, so the way that it works is you add uh, a sort of a chain of shortcuts, and these can be made up of either shortcuts donated to the system by third-party apps, so from your apps, or from first-party apps, so Apple's apps, as well as system features that they provide, such as toggling, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, sound, things like that. Um, so the way to run these is either by tapping on one of these colorful tiles or with a phrase that you assign to the shortcut and run it uh, via Siri with your voice. So now we need to understand a little bit more about how shortcuts work. And the way that they work is using domains and intents. So a domain defines the type of app, uh, for example, ride sharing, while an intent is a particular action that you can perform within that app. So for example, ordering a ride. Now, until now, uh, domains have been limited to these 10 provided by Apple. And there's a pretty good chance that the app you're working on doesn't fit into one of these categories. So, you know, what, what does Siri Kit meant for you? Probably not a lot. However, this year, it's all changing. You can define a custom intent that doesn't have to be associated to a domain, which in theory could tie into any action a user is performing within your app. So in theory, almost every app will be able to uh, add a Siri shortcut of some sort. The way that it works is you create an intent with a new intents definition file. Um, and you can define parameters and other associated metadata in here. So intents can be mapped to requests from the user and the way that your app communicates with SiriKit. So, hey Siri, how do I implement a shortcut? This section is all about how to bring shortcuts to your app as a developer. And we will look at adding shortcuts to an example application. So the app that we're going to be adding shortcuts to is called Footy Scores, and it serves exactly two purposes. The first is viewing live football scores, 
And the second is entering your football tips, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is sort of picking who you think will win on a given round ahead of time. Uh, and then comparing how many you got right at the end of the round with friends and family. If you don't follow sport, believe it or not, this is something people who do follow sport do for fun. Um, feel free to laugh. Um, <laughs> so the app has used the NS User Activity API uh, since 2014. So um, what we use it for is you know you start entering tips on the Mac, and then you can resume on your iPhone. And it's time to do the iOS 12 update. And I really want to add shortcuts to this app. We can reuse this existing user activity and with very minimal work, add some shortcut capabilities to it. But first, we're going to need to tick the Siri entitlement in the uh, capabilities tab of the Xcode project file. And now we're good to start working with the user activity. So first things first, uh, we need to set is eligible for prediction to true. Uh, and this lets the system know that this NS user activity can also be reused as a shortcut. Now in order for is eligible for prediction to have an effect, is eligible for search also needs to be set to true. And you'll see here that I have provided a suggested invocation phrase. Now this is completely optional, um, but I strongly recommend providing one because what it is is it's a suggestion to your user if they go to add this shortcut to Siri so that they know what phrase to associate with your shortcut. Now in order to donate the shortcut to the system when a user performs a relevant action, we just have to call this become current method on the user activity. It lets the system know that the user has just completed that action. Now, the system will then decide when the best time is to surface the shortcut. So for example, I put my tips in on a Wednesday night. You might do yours on a Thursday morning, maybe when you first get on the bus. Uh, if you do this at a consistent time or even location, Siri will learn this and begin to suggest the shortcut to you. So you'll see here that it's suggesting some shortcuts. Now, if I was to tap on either of these, these are just reused uh, NS user activities it would open the app, and nothing else would happen at this point. And it is worth noting that this could be considered an acceptable shortcut. We could stop here, um, we've written a shortcut, um, but I kind of want to do some more things. So we want to know when the shortcut is tapped so that we can handle it. We handle it in the app, uh, app delegate, so the application continue restoration handler method. So for example, on the enter tips um, shortcut that we donated from before, we might configure it to open straight to the tips tab so the user doesn't have to switch manually. Obviously, there are a lot more complex things you can do, um, but it's a simple example for now. So again, this is a nice first step. The shortcut does something, but what if we want to do a little bit more? I mean, maybe perform an action without having to open our iOS app, let the user complete their interaction with the shortcut from the shortcut itself. How would we go about doing this? Well, first I need to decide what a custom intent could be useful for. And people are using this app every week to enter their tips, and I've started to identify some trends around this. So people are busy, and they don't always have time to think about their tips before they put them in. What I tend to find is people will either select all of the home teams or all of the away teams without giving it much thought. And this is perfect for shortcuts because there's a pattern around this. In this example, the user has selected all the home teams and they've entered their tips. Now, I want to donate a shortcut for this action. How do I go about doing that? Well, first we're going to need to define a custom intent for this action. So we add a new intents definition file to our project and it's here where we define the intent. I want to draw your attention to a few things here. Uh, firstly, the metadata section. So I've ticked the user confirmation required field because I do want to make sure that the user actually wants to run this action before we go ahead and do that on their behalf. Now over to the parameter section. So you'll notice um, that this intent takes a parameter and it's whether the user has picked all home or all away teams. It's actually the same intent that we're donating uh, either way. It's just a different, this parameter has a different value. That's the only difference. So parameters are great for declaring any type of variance in your shortcut. So if you've got a uh, a coffee app, for example, something that's ordering coffee, you might have a bunch of parameters, so size of the drink, type of drink, amount of sugar in the drink, things like that. Um, and there's also the shortcuts type section there, so we can change the title and subtitle of the intent depending on the parameters, so the user knows exactly what to expect. Um, and you'll also notice that I've added a custom type for home away. So we aren't actually able to specify a Boolean parameter, so I've had to create a custom enum. Uh, 
and then specify the possible values that we'll use. So index zero always has to be unknown, uh, indexes one and two are home and away respectively, and that's what we'll use in our implementation. So how do we handle this intent? We have to find it, but we need to handle it somehow. Well, we use an intents extension, which is just another app extension point we can add to our Xcode project. Um, and undoubtedly, you'll want to share some code between uh, your main iOS bundle and the extension. Uh, probably the entering tips code is going to be the same. Uh, so Apple's recommendation is to create a shared private framework, move the shared code into this framework, uh, just minimizes code reuse, helps with testability, you only need to test the one lot of code, um, and it's very easy to uh, import where you need it. So I've created a framework called Footy Kit, and I'm just going to import it into all the different targets where it's needed. There's one more thing to make sure we do before we can go ahead and actually handle the intent, and that is make sure that the target membership of the intents definition file is set up correctly. So by default, an intents definition file generates class files, and we only want these to exist in one place. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to select intent classes only for the footy kit framework. And for all of the other targets that will use or reference this uh, extension, sorry, this uh, intents definition file, I'm going to choose no generated classes. All right, so we're now ready to handle the intent. Donating the intent is quite straightforward. Firstly, we create an instance of enter tips intent. Now this class was generated for us automatically by the intents definition file. I'm going to set the value of the home away parameter to either home or away, depending on you know, what the user has picked. Uh, and then simply we create an ion interaction with the intent and call its donate method. So this is the result of our shortcut so far. You can see we've got a custom title and subtitle and an action button that says do. But right now, if we were to hit that do button, nothing would happen. We haven't actually implemented uh, how to handle the shortcut. So the way we do that is we go back to the intents extension that we added to our project. There's an intent handler class. It comes with a lot of boilerplate code. You can remove most of this. Um, for now, I'm just going to focus on the handle method. Um, so it's here where we perform any required action before returning the status of this uh, intent through the completion. So this is how we're handling it in uh, footy tips. So uh, I'm going to send the request to uh, our server, we get the response, whether the tips were entered successfully or not, and then we just complete this interaction with success or failure, and that lets the user know whether the tips were put in successfully. We can also optionally implement a confirm method as well, so our, ex uh, our intent requires confirmation, um, the user has to make at least two touches before we enter it, and in this confirm method we can run any prerequisite checks before the user is actually able to run the shortcut. So in this case, I'm checking that they actually are logged into the app, because if they aren't, we don't want to let them enter tips, because we're not going to get very far. Um, so if they are logged in, then we just complete this method with ready. Uh, if they aren't logged in, we complete with failure, and they won't be able to go ahead and run the shortcut. So this is what the shortcut looks like now that we've implemented a way to handle it. Cool. So again, we could stop here. This is a pretty nice shortcut. It does the job. Um, but we want to go that one step further. So when I put in my tips, I like to know exactly which teams I've chosen. Uh, and this doesn't give me any of that. It just lets me know that the tips were entered successfully. Fortunately, we can use an intense UI extension. And I want to bring this UI from my main iOS app across to the intense uh, UI extension to let me know exactly what teams I've chosen. Now, it might not be best UI practice to just copy design straight across, but for the purposes of this example, uh, that's what we're going to do. So we start by adding an intense UI extension to our project. And then we have to double check the info P list of this uh, intense UI extension and make sure that the intent we want UI for is under the supported intents. Sometimes it does this by default, uh, sometimes it doesn't. So just uh, double check that. And by default, with the UI extension, we get an intent view controller as well as a storyboard file. So this uh, intense view controller conforms to INUI hosted view controller, which means we must implement a configure view method. Now, uh, we have to complete this method with true uh, when we're ready to show the UI, as well as the desired size of the intense UI extension. The interaction that we're handling is also passed into this 
uh, method from which we can determine the value of any parameters uh, that, we're, that we're handling. We also get the status of the intent we're handling. So has the user run the shortcut? Are we still waiting for their confirmation? Has it run successfully? Uh, and we can use all these things to update our UI accordingly. So in this case, uh, imagine we've handled stuff, going to complete true, uh, as well as the size we want. Um, so this is the code we're going to use for uh, this footy app. So we get the value of the intent parameter, our home away, and then we can update our UI depending on whether we're picking home or away teams. And we also get the value of the interaction. So in this case, I'm handling, uh, I'm showing different UI depending on whether we're in the ready state or the success state. Um, for the purposes of this example, that's enough. But if you were uh, doing this in a production app, you'd probably, or you need to handle a failure state and potentially even an in progress state so you can show a loading indicator of some sort. So this is what it looks like now that we've added UI to our shortcut. Cool, so the UI changes uh, depending on the state of the shortcut we're running. So there's just one more thing I wanna do before I'm satisfied with the shortcut. So users won't just run this shortcut when they're looking at their phone. They might add it to Siri and run it via voice or add it to a chain of actions in the shortcut app um, and just let it run sequentially. So I wanna create a great experience for these users too. And the best way to do that is with a custom voice response from Siri. So we have to go back to the intent's definition file for this uh, and we look at the response part of the intent. So you'll see that by default there are two responses, uh, success and failure. And I'm gonna add the home away uh, property there so that I can change um, the voice response based on the value of this parameter. You'll see that the response now reads, your tips are in, you picked all home away teams this week where home away is a variable. So the only other thing left to do is to pass the value of that parameter through to the, uh, through to the intent uh, when we complete from our intent handler. So we go from that uh, to this, so you'll notice we're passing in the value of home away. And you could do this with as many parameters as you like to create a completely custom response. Um, you, know, you could fetch data from your server and pass this through as well. So the, the response can be completely custom. It doesn't just have to be one or two parameters that you're changing there. So now, regardless of whether we run this shortcut with or without the UI extension, we get a text response back from Siri, which it will also read out loud. So I did mention that a UI, intense UI extension can't be shown on the Apple Watch, but that doesn't mean we can't show shortcuts on Apple Watch. So we can't run shortcuts on Apple Watch at all. So the response we get will be text or audio only on the watch, uh, but we can still run any intent that we're donating. So we do this by defining a card template, setting a title, a subtitle, and an optional image. Um, it's recommended that these are uh, different to the strings you're using in your iOS app just because the watch has such a small screen. Um, and then we set the watch template property on the relevant shortcut. And finally, we set the relevant shortcut. So this just lets the system know that this shortcut can be uh, surfaced on the Siri watch face of the Apple Watch, as well as, added, oh, as well as run from Siri on the Apple Watch. So this is what the shortcut looks like when we run it with Siri on the Apple Watch. We're able to confirm the action before we run it, and then we get a, a text response from Siri. And I also mentioned before that Apple provide us with a custom view controller uh, to present from within our app when a user may want to add a shortcut then and there. So you'll notice that on the success screen here, once they enter their tips, I've got a button to add the shortcut to Siri. It's, this, uh, it's the same shortcut that I donated to the system just now because I noticed the user picked all home teams. Uh, and we're going to use that to uh, instantiate an add voice shortcut view controller. So the code is relatively straightforward. Um, it's important to provide a suggested invocation phrase. Again, not mandatory, but I think you should probably do that every time. Um, and then we yeah, instantiate that INUI add voice shortcut <laughs> view controller with the shortcut uh, and just simply pre present that view controller. Now it's also important to note that the uh, class that's handling the um, presenting, presentation of that view controller uh, needs to conform to INUI add voice shortcut view controller delegate. Uh, and then implement methods for when the user either cancels or dismisses that view controller or when it completes successfully. 
So how does this all tie in with Shortcuts, the app? Well, this, short, this shortcut that we've now donated to the system can be added to any chain or list of, of longer shortcuts that we might be creating. Uh, an example for entering tips might be a shortcut for, that you call when you're running late. So you might set up uh, a bunch of conditions that if it's Thursday morning, which is the, the day of the week that the football starts, um, if it's Thursday morning and you haven't yet entered your tips, then you just want to run this shortcut for entering all, your, uh, all the tips for the home teams. Uh, that way you've got something in there and you can change later if you have the time. So shortcuts are a huge step forward for interfacing with our devices via voice. Um, it, it's very much a first iteration though. There are a few, I think, fairly obvious downfalls of shortcuts at the moment. I mean, they work well in their current form, but there are definitely some obvious improvements potentially for a version two uh, going forward next year. Um, so the, the first thing I'd like to see would be uh, voice inputs to shortcuts from Siri. So as I mentioned before, I do quite like that you have to add every shortcut you want to Siri automatically. Uh, and that part's quite nice, but I think it's a little bit silly that you have to add almost the same shortcut twice if all that you're changing is one little parameter. So I think hopefully next year we see Siri smart enough to understand parameters uh, when we talk to Siri with voice. Uh, and secondly, being able to run shortcuts automatically based on certain factors. So just like HomeKit, uh, with HomeKit you can trigger different lights turn off and on depending on your location or a time of day or sunrise, things like that. I think it would make sense to be able to run shortcuts, either ones that you generate and store in the shortcuts app or just individual ones donated to the system by third party apps based on those factors as well. Uh, but overall, I think, yeah, shortcuts are great and I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, the round of app updates next month when iOS 12 drops and seeing what developers have been working on for the last few months. So thank you. Uh, are there any questions?